Anita in San Antonio, Texas. Your thoughts on this, Anita? Yeah, hi, Tom. Yeah, um, this weekend, um, I just couldn't help but think, start thinking about the, um, the banality of evil. Yeah. Hannah Arndt, yeah, Hannah Arndt's, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, book yeah. about the Holocaust. And um, I think we think we, we recognize evil, like we recognize it now with this Dylan man, this is man. Um, but I think it's, you know, the people who, who erected this, these statues, these, these, you know, and uh, to the uh, Confederate heroes, as they call them, and uh, who just, you know, support continuing to keep up this, this flag, which represents evil. And, and, and I think uh, the people that have pandered to these people and uh, that, that think like this. Yeah, across the Republican you know, Party, I would add. Yes, I think that they all have blood on their hands. Yeah, the Confederate. Do. Yeah, which leads to the whole discussion of the Confederate flag and why is it still flying, you know, next to the state capitol in South Carolina, and you know that, and and people think, oh, it has something to do with, you know, after the Civil War. No, I'm sorry, that flag was put up there in the ni- early 1960s, uh, probably by one of these white citizens councils or by promotion of them, um, they, and uh, or people affiliated with them in response to the Brown versus Board of Education ruling and all of the discussion that was happening about we need a Civil Rights Act, we need a Voting Rights Act, things like that. And it was just their way of protesting civil rights um, and school integration, which was starting to happen, uh, quote, forced busing, end quote, I think started happening in the... uh, uh, 70s. Yeah, well, I thought it was the early... I thought it was the 60s, but I could be wrong. I'd have to to go back, but I think it was during Johnson's administration. But My question... To anybody that thinks we should keep that flag up would be um, if they feel like the Germany should continue to fly a swastika. Yeah, the problem is that when you make parallels with Germany, um, it it tends to cause people to just tune out. On the other hand, we have done a marvelous job. We white people in this country, in the United States, over the last uh, in you know in control of the school system, in control of the textbooks, in control of the power structure, in control of the politics, and in control of the media, white people have done a marvelous job of diminishing, minimizing the fact that that uh, Mount Vernon, George Washington's home, which is just down the road from here, is it was a, camp, a concentration camp. Monticello was a concentration camp. Uh, the the uh, Thomas Jefferson's home. They, uh, or plantation. We call them plantations. Like there's something wonderful. I'm sorry. They were t- concentration camps. They were enforced. There was there was terrorism. The entire South was a terrorist state. It was an apartheid state. It was worse than an apartheid state. It was a sl- you know it was it was a slave state. And and, right. and and go ahead. And that's why I think the swastika is 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 apt. I mean yeah because it, it, a Jewish person or anybody who had been persecuted by the Nazi regime. Imagine if that you know when they see a swastika, how that must make them feel. And I yeah. think for an African American to see a Confederate flag, well, and it's also the flag feeling. of traitors who committed treason, right. and no, and I who agree. and who lost the war. It should be consigned to, to a museum, as as President Obama said, as as uh, Mitt Romney agreed, as Jeb Bush said he did down in Florida. Um, yeah, Anita, thank you for the call. I, you know, you say the the the, the parallels there. Louise and I were uh, to to Nazi Germany, to H- Hannah Arendt. I, I would or Arendt or however you say it. I, I was remembering, and I, and Louise and I had this conversation over the weekend um, that in some ways this is very much like uh, Milton Mayer's book. They thought they were free, where he went over after World War II, and he interviewed ten quote, good Germans, a college professor, a baker, a guy who worked in a factory, who, you know, kind of watched the trains going by and didn't know anything about it. And the main message of all of them was, you know, it happens around you slowly enough that you don't realize it until it's too late. And then it's too late to do anything about it because they have so much power and so much so much force. And I think that's, you know, there 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 is a parallel there. Uh, both in with regard to Reaganism, I mean, you know, just in the last 35 years, I mean, just in the last five years or so, people are starting to wake up to how regressive, how, how our country has gone backwards in terms of the middle class and economics and things. But, you know, the, and, and, and in terms of race, it's this, this persistent, there's this persistent drumbeat on the hard right about race that... Is, is very troubling. 
It's very troubling. And the question is, you know, what do we do about it? 